Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the course decoding comic studies and reading graphic narratives in 21st century India, right. So what we have been talking in the last lecture is we took one graphic novel by one of the prominent comic artist that is Will Asner's contract with the God and we saw that how emphatically he explores certain theme which are so deep and so related to each one of us and the beauty of <coughs> his uh, uh, book was that with the help of his uh, theory sequential art he explained certain themes and extrapolated it and at the same time he connected with the characters as well as readers all right so the second one who is extremely significant art Spiegelman and uh, his book that we are going to discuss mouse so as i have already suggested that these graphic novels are simple i am just taking these novels so that i can tell you how to read how to understand them they don't need any explicit explanation that all will be available on your uh, uh, screen so just look at the screen and listen to me the concept would be clear because so far we have explained we have talked in details about each and every component of the comics that are significant in understanding these graphic novels all right so look at the slides now and you see that uh, he is the one uh, uh, art spiegelman uh, uh, which we are moving ahead to the next work in this lecture. Uh, Let us talk about Art Spiegelman and his contribution to comics. All right? He is an American cartoonist, editor and comic advocate who is best known for his graphic novel Mausch. Spiegelman was born in Stockholm, Sweden in 1948 and grew up in the United States. In the 1970s, he became involved in the underground comics scene, publishing his own comics and contributing to publications such as Raw and Arcade. Right? And in the 1980s, Spiegelman began work on a mouse and that is the one we are going to talk about. So, mouse is a graphic novel that tells the story of his father's experience as a holocaust survivor. So you see what is a common in both of them either it is a Will Eisner or it is Spiegelman right. Will Eisner also talk about in the contract with a God a particular story which was very close to his heart and here also you see he is talking about a very close uh, uh, incident that occurred in his life and he is talking about uh, that incident in his uh, book called Mouse. Alright, so the point what I am uh, trying to bring over here is that your job is to examine the treatment of the personal experience in the comics. Alright, so look at the slides now. So here you see that Mouse, a graphic novel that tells the story of his father's experience as a holocaust survivor you see interestingly the subtitle is a survivor's tale you know a survivor's tale my father bleeds history something like that and here my trouble began so the book was published in two volumes one in 1986 right and another one is 1991 and one numerous awards and you will be surprised to know that it also won Pulitzer Prize right everyone know 
about this. So, Mouse is widely regarded as a landmark work in the history of the graphic novel and is credited with helping to establish the medium as a legitimate form of literature. In addition to his work as a creator, Spiegelman, Spiegelman has also been an advocate for the comic book medium, right? And uh, serving as an editor for publications such as Raw and Little Lit, and working to promote the artistic and the literary merits of a comics, Spiegelman continues to work in the comic book medium, and his work has been exhibited in galleries and museums around the world. Overall, Art Spiegelman is a pioneering figure in the world of a comics whose work has helped to elevate the medium form, a form of entertainment, right, uh, for children to a legitimate form of literature and art. In 1978, Art Spiegelman convinced his reluctant father, Wal Waldeck, to talk to him about his experience as a Polish Jew during the Second World War. What came out of it was a serial of a comics about a life smashed up by the Holocaust. After nearly 40 years, Spiegelman Moss confirms itself to be a postmodern analysis of World War II and later on Pantheon books published Moss in general volumes and then a single volume editions. But its first appearance was in December 1980. It was an insert in Raw, a magazine founded by Spiegelman himself and his wife, and his wife, sorry, Francois Mauli in the same year. It was an influential magazine in the comic field and treated them as a cultural object worth disseminating and analyzing, not just as an entertainment. Spiegelman Moss is the first and only graphic novel to win the Pulitzer Prize in 1992. In 2011, the author made Metamouse, a complete guide and detailed study of a mouse, including content such as an interview with Spiegelman, sketches, photographs, and the original versions of Waldeck's recording. To understand the development of action in short, that is you could see on your screen, the first panels with Art visiting his father in New York build a narrative frame leading the narration, right. The main focus remains on Valdeck's experience while the framing allows the reader to understand Art's point of view. The storyline swings in and out of the two timelines, giving a genuine view of Spiegelman's family. The narration of the past represents a discovery of the author's background but it also allows him to develop his relationship with his father. It is the story of a survivor Vladek and of the son Art discovering his family origin, right. So, before I move to the next slide, I would suggest you that you read and you remember that if you see this is the screen, this is the, <coughs> this is the uh, photo that I have been showing to you to explain uh, the experiment, right? And interestingly, what you realize when we are reading uh, Spiegelman's Mausch, that one thing what he does after winning the Pulitzer Prize, that the gap between art and comic is reduced, right? And the second interesting part of Spiegelman is that when he is talking about his uh, 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 families or let's say tracing the origin, you have to read it closely and understand the technique and the method through which he does. So, before I move to the next slide, you can pause your video and read the details given to it. Obviously, I will suggest you that later on you should read in details, but for now, I would ask you just read the slides that is on your screen. So, I am not reading it, I am just keeping it for you and I am sure that you will read it. So, moving to the next slide, what you see that in the first part, Vladek speaks about his marriage with Art's mother Anja in 1937. The Nazis invaded Poland shortly after and sent him to a work camp, 
right on his release life for jewish people became more and more difficult in 1943 the nazis arrested vladek and anja and deported them to auschwitz i am sure that we all are very familiar what auschwitz is famous for however it's a beautiful place but it has become notorious for the heinous act committed by hitler in auschwitz the second part starts with a jump in time to 1986 while art is experiencing writer's block he can only move on when he has to host his father at that time he had the chance to know what his father never told him namely what he went through during the months in auschwitz and dachau vladek tells his story in a detached manner from his suffering to the end of the war when he could finally find his wife and start a new life the last panel shows vladek and anza's gravestone he died in 1982 before the comics were finished right so the author leaps out hyperbole judgment or personal comments right you see uh, on the screen that is a, a very uh, a touching uh, moment so describing what happened is enough every narrative and graphic of spiegelman's choice is oriented to make moss an analysis of a war as a complex and dark period where everything was uncertain and nothing safe moss uses a specific linguistic style the language spiegelman father speak is the outcome of the usa's melting pot jews living in new york developed a unique way of speaking a hybrid language that can be heard in some woody allen movies just as in the marvelous i'm sure that you all are very familiar with uh, Ma the marvelous waldex english follows polish grammar structure and contains words coming from yiddish spoken by jews in the east of europe i have already spoken about it in the previous lecture some yiddish terms became part of everyday american english such as bagel or mesuga and created a language that contributes to cultural identification right i am just writing it for our convenience sake right well they speech is confident in flashbacks while it gets uncertain in the present reflecting the distance from his home country since he had to leave he feels his nation betrayed him he does not belong to poland anymore nor to the usa where he feels like a stranger so his language reflects his sensation of estrangement in the present time the language becomes a metaphor for his long journey to find a safe place without forgetting where he comes from the title itself is a pun mouse means mouse in journal right and i'm sure that uh, you could easily understand when you saw the pic or the photograph of uh, the book cover so uh, what happens right uh, i mean uh, uh, that this weldeg speech is very confident in flashback and it gets uncertain in the present reflecting the distance from his home country since he had to leave he feels his nation betrayed him he does not belong to poland anymore so what happens that i was talking about that spoken language is not the only element of a postmodern art and literature in the comics the frame is scheme represents a solid meta narrative element given how it follows on from seeing how the comics develop in author's mind the author blurs the line between present and past interruption in dialogues and jumps between the timeline make clear the chaos in his mind while listening to the story right so what interestingly we see that uh, you see that the, the slide if you see that mouse means mouse in german but really recalls the german verb right so this is the something is speaking like as you so it's a deliberate attempt like if you look at the screen i would say to make a pause for a second and you see that how there is a post modern techniques intervention when he is writing this story at the same time there is a deliberate interruption right and how one language is transferred into the another language that you can see so the beauty 
of this book is that the new intervention, the new experiment and the technique deployed in his book, right? So don't read it just as a story because if you read it just as a story, it will not make a sense. Uh, it is emphatic, it is a critical when you think from a different perspective, you see that how I can look at it as a postmodern text itself, all right? So going back to the slide, now you see, you can pause it and you read it again so that you can understand in details, right? So what happens is Spiegelman's mouse, right? Spiegelman chooses various animal as metaphors of nationality. He represents Jews as mice, right? Germans as cats, American as dogs, and Poles, Polish people as pigs, and French as frogs. Characters pretending to belong to the other countries visually wear a mask. The use of anthropomorphized animals in comics is nothing new in itself. Both in children comics as Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse, right? I am sure that uh, everyone knows. And in underground comics for adults such as Robert Crumb's Fritz the Cat. But they, those were just anthropomorphic animals recalling the fairy tale tradition of a beast acting like a humans. Spiegelman takes one step further, being the first illustrator using animal to show cultural differences, right? It is the first device he uses to obtain emotional detachment, making identification difficult. Spiegelman Mouse is the first comic to talk about the Holocaust, dealing with the concept and the story of a genocide. Spiegelman decided to let the story talk, putting himself in the background and showing more than telling, he eases as much as possible both the narrative and the graphic style. Growing apart from events, page after page, panels are more and more neutral and stylized. Lines become rough and words seem screamed. The fragmented narration, dark sketches and cold gaze on events create a historic reportage that does not even try to find an explanation or a sense, just expose. So matching history with its consequence in the present, Spiegelman's mouse gives a strong and personal point of view on war. Mouse was among the first books to be classified as a graphic novel, following the path that was opened by Will Eisner in a contract with a god. It helped to strengthen the idea that comics can address several targets and discuss grown up serious subjects. Spiegelman wanted to create a more mature and underground style, taking inspiration from Harold Gray who wrote Little Orphan Annie and Franz Mechorel, known for the city, he contributed to comics recognition as art forms and not just entertainment in opposition with superhero comics. Together with two DC comic stories, Watchmen and the Dark Knight Returns, which I will be in fact discussing in the uh, next lecture, right? Watchmen and the Dark Knight Returns. Mausch contributed to changing the general perception of the comics. From that moment on, also thanks to independent publisher and a growing market, the comics industry was no longer dominated by Marvel and DC comics and it started to be something that could address not only kids, but also a vast audience of mature readers, right? So mouse, a survival tales can be considered as an autobiography, weighing the parts of the story where Spiegelman's life story is interrupting. His father's account of Holocaust, the narrative does not completely fall into that category. Moreover, Mouse is considered to depict postmodern ethnography. Even though the text unravels in an order, following Vladek's account of Holocaust and Nazi Germany, 
it is not a historical documentation of the shame unlike other stories and documentaries and films that have been based on holocaust mausch is a depiction of a personal history as well as official history it throws light on the personal experience of spiegelman's family during the world war and the lives of other jews and their survival the autobiographical part which describes the author's life itself focuses on how his family's holocaust trauma has become his trauma and the way in which he has inherited his parents survivor guilt see so the point is that when we are reading this story and when we go back to uh, understand the personal experience what happens that uh, personal experience are put in challenge to the official documentation right so a person who has survived the holocaust he is speaking to us and he is telling a kind of a different story which are possibly unavailable or which are not accessible by common men right so what happens that we are more like these stories are more believable because it is lived by a person who witnessed it who survived this holocaust so therefore as a post modern technique it's not just about personal story we are listening it's also challenging the meta narrative that is called history right so personal story is taking the shape of a history and that idea is documented in comic writing right so this is something unique way to look at mouse all right so going ahead now to the slide that you see mouse a survivor's tale can be considered as an autobiography right weighing like weighing the parts of the story which is interrupted also by his father's account of the holocaust but history is a narrative right we all know this history is a narrative and that combines heterogeneous elements it can be said as a construct which might appear objective at the surface but is actually subjected to various prejudices and is distorted mind this word but here the dominating voice of veladik throughout the story is what gives the reader a clear picture on the magnitude of larger historical events here the account of history is given through the voice of the subject who underwent the trauma here mosh cannot be considered as an accurate indisputable testimony of the genocide the author himself has said that despite the fact that the story seems to be concrete in an order arranged box by box it is a recollection of the past and a retelling right that mind the word retelling of how much truth the father was willing to share and that is why more than the horrors of holocaust what strikes the reader most are the second generation trauma experienced by the author and the guilt of a survival more than simply telling a story mouse is a process of transferring and recording memory the reflexivity of the memory of the past is well is well portrayed in the story through the intrusion made by daily life while the author is very much interested in his father's account the father is trying to mend his uh, relationship with his son he often complains about mala another survivor with veladik right mala uh, is he, he see, has the same position in which veladik is right both have survived out of holocaust right so he often complains about mala another survivor with veladik and says that he has no one to share it with but spigleman he tries to invade into his son's lifestyle his way of dressing his smoking habits etc etc and the fact that spigleman has involved all this in the comic shows that he is trying to prove how memory is not based on definitive fact rather a part of the construction of the past 
Thus, the story generated as a result of this father-son interaction is not something that is already known, but a unique experience that belongs to the teller. The medium of a comics allows the author to show his process, the circumstances that lead to this interaction and he achieves a mixture of a picture and text which makes the mutually constructive relationship between the teller, listener and the reader. The part where Art is trying to obtain his mother Anja's journal proved that he was also in search of another perspective or another experience within his family. Now later the realization that those have been destroyed in the war brings immense pain to the author. This is a metaphor that points out the difficulty in recovering different narratives of the Holocaust and other historical incidents, right? So, as you saw yourself that I am picking up one side narrative, another side I am picking up a history, another side I am picking up the memory and I, in the, when I was talking about the memory as we all know, the memory is not just about the act of remembrance, but it has also to do with act of forgetting. So, when we are indulged in the memory, uh, in the memory's act of uh, recording the events, we also know that there are certain things which are not remembered. Obviously, I am not getting into memory studies, but we all know that how certain things becomes a part of a memory and how certain things does not become a part of a memory. So, that is a very politics. So, the, but the point what I am making is that when I am dealing with the mouse, even Spiegelman along with me, we both are nowhere trying to suggest that we are telling you a part of history. We are just saying that it is a part of a memory, it is a part of a story, but at the same time as I have been talking about that at the same time, I am making a point that this is also challenging the grand narrative produced by history, alright. So, these keep these things in mind and look at the slides so that we can move ahead to understand certain more nuances indulged in or imbued in or let us say fixed in mouse. Through the illustration, if you see that, art make note of the small thing like his father peddling, his Auschwitz tattoo, the family members around the dining table, in Vladek's story, the picture of himself eating with Vladek and Mala and so on. These illustrations shows us the way, right? Here you see, the all this. This is the way in which the present in continuously trapped, saved, evolved with the past, right? So, here you see present with past, right? The image of the past and present are hence not clearly distinct in mouse, but closely interwoven on several level. The first frame itself does not begin uh, with, uh, uh, the first frame itself does not begin with Vladek's account of a world war but with art's traumatic ex experience of his friend leaving him. His experience as a secondary victim and inheritor and witnesses and witness to traumatic memory. This again makes the point clear that Moss is not specifically about Holocaust, but about the relationship of a memory of the trauma to the present. This demonstrates that memory and history are not two distinct entities objective and constructed, but rather they are dependent on each other and there is no defined, definite beginning or ending to both, right. So, that is a one of the interesting uh, point we can see that is made in the mosh, right. And I have been uh, uh, trying to hint you to understand this point. The point is that either we look at a history or either we look at a memory, right, the line is blurred we cannot say that this is a history or this is a memory. I am sure that now see the point why I am making this that this is how as a literature student we should take comic studies very very seriously like what you saw on the slides it shows 
that the present is being prepared by the past. So, either you are living in the present or in the past is almost blurred, right? So, look at the slide again and take a pause for a minute and I would suggest you read closely. Obviously, I have suggested you that go back home and once like the lecture is over, pick up the book mouse, read completely. But for now, you can pause the video and read it, then only it will make more sense to you, all right? So, let us move ahead now. You see on the slide that a large number of the debates and discussion that surround Mosh or on the appropriateness of portraying the holocaust in the form which Spiegelman has selected. Usually comics and illustration are for the large crowd. The strip of entertainment mixed with humor normally viewed as a trivial. However, Spiegelman's creative move was not to trivialize holocaust. He chose this genre because first and foremost, he is an artist, an illustrator and this was a medium he was comfortable with. Spiegelman has also managed to break the convention and understanding of modes of representation and literature. Through this complex narrative structure arranged in order and made to seem simple, he has transgressed the conventional ways of telling or retelling a story. Instead of repeating what has already been done, Spiegelman makes re-representation, re-representation of a familiar history while also escalating the seriousness given to the genre of a comic medium, widening its highly expressive multifaceted and layered structure. The author himself has admitted that transferring memories and depicting them through illustration in a normally considered trivial medium has been a daunting task for him. However, he has succeeded in establishing order and accuracy. He has successfully portrayed the process of recollecting the memory and then orderly laying them in a chronology starting from classification, separation, deportation and extermination done by the Nazis. The minute detailing given to each of the illustration, the emotion, body language, such gifts makes it more commendable. Spiegelman's conscious employment of animal character in mouse has been controversial and criticized by many who argue that it cast the significance of the holocaust as commonplace and comedic. He justifies it by saying that this adaptation, right? He justifies it by saying that this adaptation make possible an authentic portrayal avoiding unnecessary emotions by portraying Jews as mice, right? Jews as mice, Nazis as cats and Paul as a pigs. He is also trying to evade misrepresentation and over determination of a human imagery. The animal imagery also helps in showing some of the brutal events of the holocaust in a less gruesome way. These anthropomorphic imageries are however secondary to the narration which focuses on relationship. This conscious mask as a matter of a fact only amplifies the human characteristics helping the readers to identify the character as a humans rather than animals, alright. So, knowing how uh, 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 the narrative progresses might shed some light on how the experience have been captured, right. So, Mouse, a survivor's tale consists of a book 1, My Father Bleeds History and book 2 and here my trouble began from Mothswitz to Catskills and beyond. The graphic novel alternates between a frame, a story showing RT interviewing Veladek to write a comic book and the story that Veladek tells of World War II and the Holocaust. Right? So, the book uh, begins with a prologue set in Rezo Park, New York around 1958. 
RT explains that he was 10 or 11 years old and his roller skate broke while he was playing with friends. Those friends leave him behind and call him a rotten egg. As RT helps his father Vladek saw some wood, Vladek notices that RT is crying. Vladek does not comfort him. Instead, Vladek suggests RT does not know what friendship is. We can see that while the story is primarily focused on Vladek's life, there is also a frame narrative, right? So, frame narrative basically means, right? Frame narrative basically suggests a story within the story, right? A story within the story. So, remember this, this was I am sure that you can find in Conrad, right. So, that shows RT and his father interacting in the present with RT asking question as Veladek relays his experiences, as Veladek describes the horror that he faced as a Jewish person in the World War II, there are interspersed scene that reveals some of the challenges that RT faces as the son of a concentration camp survivor. For example, Veladek is obsessive about money and constantly fuses, sorry, fusses over RT's cloths, decision and refusal to eat everything on his plate. Even though we know that RT is adult, right. So, I am very much tempted to read this story again. In fact, I want to read this and explain to you, but it will take lot of time. So, that is why I am just focusing on the slides and explaining to you so that you can understand, but I am sure that you will read it. So, except for a brief scene that depicts RT as a human, you see, wearing a mouse mask. All the people in the story appear as anthropomorphic animals, right? Just as, just to revise the abstract manner of representation, Jews are depicted as mice, right? And German, you see, as cats. And Pole, you see, as pigs, you know, see, the Pole as a pigs. And then French as a frogs, see here. And American as a dogs. Right. The story begins around 1978 with uh, RT visiting his father Vladek in New York City. Vladek looks frail and healthy. He has had two heart attack and the suicide of his wife Anza's mother a decade earlier has taken a serious toll on him. Vladek is remarried to a woman named Mala. Right another survivor of the Holocaust, with whom he constantly argues, RT asks Veladek to tell him stories about life during World War II, so that he can create a comic book based on Veladek experience, right. So, here <coughs> we come to the story now. So, Veladek start his story in 1935, while he was living in Poland, after marrying Anza Zelbag. Vladek moves to Sonoswi, Poland, where her wealthy family helps them get established. Vladek and Anza have a son named Rishu, and Anja's father, a millionaire, gives Vladek money to buy a factory in Bielsko. Vladek runs the factory during the week and returns home to Sosonwi and the weekends to visit Anza and Rishu. Anza has a breakdown due to severe postpartum depression. Sorry, postpartum uh, depression. All right. So Valdek says with her in a sanitary sanitary mean Czechoslovakia until she recovers. In 1939, Valdek is drafted into the Polish army and sent to the front lines to the fights the Nazis, where he is captured and becomes a prisoner of a war. Valdek is eventually released back to Poland and he returns to Anza and Richu in Sosnowik. Right? This is a story. Now, what you see? 
as the war continues the nazis begin begin rounding up jewish people in sosnovik and sending them away on trains food and resources became scarce and vladek begins trading goods on the black market in order to provide for his family several of several of his friends are caught trading goods and executed the nazis later order everyone to report to the local stadium to have their papers verified this is a simple story i'm just uh, uh, like this is, that is on your screen itself you can read it by your own self uh, by uh, uh, by pausing the video once there many jews are taken away from deportation luckily vladek's cousin is working one of the tables at the stadium and he is able to secure vladek's release as well as anjas and her parents vladek's sister fila who has a four children and his vladek's father are not as unfortunate sorry they are not as fortunate and they are never seen again right so during one of the artists visit to help his father and record his stories about world war 2 he finds out that his father read a comic he drew years before the comic prisoner on the hell planet a case history is included in mouse right this prisoner on the hell planet a case history that was included uh, uh, in mouse opening up a meta narrative aspect of the story beyond the biographical element itself the comic depicts rt as a prisoner and shows the mental emotional pain he endured because of his mother's suicide in 1968 continuing on with this story valdek says that after leaving his stadium and he and his family were relocated to a ghetto in srodula in order to keep richu safe valdek and anja send him to live with anja's sister tosha in zawarik si they later find out that when tosha discovered that she and the rest of the jews in zawarishi were going to be shipped to auschwitz he poisoned richu herself and her two children in order to spare them a worse fate at the camp when valdek and anja realize that the germans are going to send everyone in the ghetto to concentration camps they go into hiding to avoid capture once the ghetto is empty valdek and anza begin to walk back to sosnovik along the way they secure passes to hungary with some smugglers but the smugglers betray them and hand them over to the germans valdek is sent to auschwitz and anza is taken to birkenau valdek tells rt that anza kept diaries after the war but valdek destroyed them in a fit of a grief rt becomes upset and ails at his father saying that he would have had valuable information in them so at the beginning of the book 2 while rt is staying with friends in warmont he receives a call from valdek mala has left him and taken some of their shared valuables fearing that fearing that he will be responsible for taking care of his father rt goes to visit him in new york while they continue his story and describes the terrible condition in auschwitz while working there he uses his knowledge of a trade a skill to remain valuable and avoid execution he learns that anza is in the secondary camp auschwitz virkenau and arranges to do some repairs there so that he can see her right after holding the few resources available veladek bribes some of the nazi guards to have anja relocated to his camp to work in the mutations shop veladek <coughs> continues his story describing the various ways that he uses used his skills <coughs> and resourcefulness to help himself and anja survive at auschwitz as the russian army closes in on auschwitz veldek is tasked with dismantling the gas chambers all of the prisoners are eventually evacuated and relocated to dachau a camp in germany that's a very uh, notorious camp right dachau so and then what we see over there 
that while they contracts typhus, right? He contracts typhus from the lice at the cow and becomes a very, very sick. He is sent towards Switzerland by train to be traded as a prisoner of a war and eventually rescued by American soldiers. After traveling back through Germany to Poland, he is reunited with Anja when RT visits his father to hear the last of the story. Valdek is very sick, Mala has returned to help but is still frustrated by Valdek. When RT starts to leave, Valdek confused and tired calls him Rishius, right? As we can see, the majority of the plot of the mouse is driven by Valdek's recounting of his life in the lead up to and duration of World War II. During World War II, the Nazi party of Germany led by Adolf Hitler carried out an extended campaign of persecution against the Jewish people. This campaign began with the laws restricting the rights of Jewish people escalated to moving all Jewish people into ghettos and ultimately culminated in their imprisonment and murder in concentration camp with forced labor, rampant disease and starvation. Waldeck, who is Jewish, recount a series of conflicts that demonstrate how he was able to survive such persecution and protect his wife Anja and their family. Waldeck's story shows him to be a skilled businessman who knows how to use the resources available to him. He demonstrates confidence and boldness, pretending to be police and volunteering himself as an expert on tin smithing and shoemaking when he is only slightly familiar with these traits. He slays his cigarettes bread rations, chocolate bars in order to uh, trade for more valuable goods or for, or for preferential treatment for himself or for Anza. Mouse depicts Valdek as express, exceptionally skillful and intelligent, but this characterization at least in part matches the anti-Semitic stereotype of the Jew as a greedy schemer. European Christian believed Jewish people were greedy capitalists who built their wealth on the backs of a common people and thus ugly stereotypes were used to justify their mistreatment. Valdek's character is more complex than the stereotypes. However, he proves himself heroic in many instances, contriving to bring home more food to his family, saving his resources in order to protect his wife, Anza from a violent capo and the present day preparing to leave a large inheritance to his son RT to safeguard his future against calamity. Valdex's well, story in Moss suggests that racist stereotype went beyond unfocused hate and helped justify wide scale violence against the Jews because they erased the Jews' humanity. Valdex's well, storyline in the past details how he survived the Holocaust against enormous odds along with his wife Anja, but the portrayal of his wife in the present makes it clear that his survival was only piecemeal. He is often angry in the present day, displaying a short temper with his second wife Mala and often expressing his frustration with his son RT. Anja's survival was short lived as she died by suicide decade after the end of World War II. During the war, Waldeck and Anja's survival teetered on a knife's edge, any moment could be the one that leads to death. The trauma of such uncertainty are never far from the surface in the present day. From Waldeck's inability to throw out any foods to his fights about, uh, <coughs> fights about money with Mala, the past has broken Waldeck in many ways, making it difficult for him to connect meaningfully with his loved ones. So, each chapter in Mouse begins and ends with scene set in present days that dramatize RT's project to record Valdex's story and turn it into a comic book. This storyline includes a series of conflicts between RT and Valdex, demonstrating their tumultuous father's son relationship. Valdex hassles RT to help around the house, which RT actively avoids doing. In one memorable moment, Valdek throws out Artie's jacket because he thinks it is too savvy and pushes his own hand-me-down jacket on Artie. 
RT also reveals that the reason he became an artist in the first place was to spite Waldeck by choosing a profession that was fundamentally unpractical. The source of the conflicts between RT and Waldeck often boils down to money. That is, Waldeck wants to save it at all, at all cost, and RT wants to be free to pursue his own desire regardless of their costs. Though Mouse mainly tells Waldeck's story, RT's original hope was also to include his mother Anja's story. She is no longer alive having died by suicide and Waldeck can only provide a partial retelling of her story because he was not there for all of it. When Waldeck reveals that Anja kept diaries, RT reportedly asks to see them. Finally, Waldeck admits that he burned the diaries because they were too painful for him after Anja's death. The long shimmering tension between RT and Waldeck erupts with RT calling, calling Waldeck a murderer for destroying Anj Anja's diaries. RT's project is blocked by both his mother's absence and his father's decision to destroy what little remained of her. Ultimately, however, RT's largest struggle in retelling Waldeck's history in his sense of his own failing, he bemoans that he does not understand Waldeck or the Holocaust. He questions if the comics format could ever be sophisticated enough to convey the complexity of the account. He feels guilty for writing mouse and profiting from it when he himself did not survive the Holocaust. Even before attempting to tell his father's story as a child he sometime wished he had been in Auschwitz with his parents so he could understand their experience better. Artist's torturous artistic process reveals it another way that the trauma of the Holocaust haunts the present in his difficulty connecting to and understanding Waldeck. Now, Mass is subtitled, Mouse is subtitled A Survivor's uh, Tale. The book interrogates the many ways Waldeck did not survive. Survive intact as we understood earlier. Is unhappy and dissatisfied with his wife, right? And what we also notice in that, that uh, uh, he does not love Arti and loved Anja dearly. Also, Anja similarly survived the Holocaust, but the cost to her was anguish intense enough to prompt her to take her own life. In the depiction of Artie's artistic process, it also suggests that Artie's survival was impacted as he himself struggled with depression and has a difficulty connecting with his father. Mouse argues that the present is inescapably saved by the past and when the past is as drenched in trauma as the holocaust is, it is nearly impossible to outrun. So, what interestingly the entire story is about is, is very complex and the artistic process through which it has been narrated, it becomes extremely difficult and intriguing at the same time. See, the one thing that he bust, look at the character sketch of Waldeck. A person, he comes up as a zoo and if you remember the in the Merchant of Venice or Oliver Twist, most of the stories where you see that either the Psylocke or the Fagin, they are always represented or projected as a Jews who are greedy, who are malice. In fact, in the Christian stories, you will always see Zeus as a villain, right? So the moment, I mean, in the, in the history, through the representation, it has always been narrated to us that Jewish people are bad people, right? And that is how first time what happens when we are reading Mouse, this myth is busted. The person is not a greedy here anymore. The person is extremely conscious and concerned about his life, about the family, about the person around and therefore he is, he is 
not what the stereotypical image is projected before us, right? So that is the first thing. Second thing, you look at the artistic process through which the story is narrated to us. For us, this is history, memory, personal stories are getting so much uh, together that sometimes it switches to the history, sometimes it switches to the memory and sometimes it switches to the personal story. So the point what I am talking about at the same time, it brings one of the important uh, crucial issues from the past and that is very much in our imagery, everyone thinks of it that is a holocaust or let us say massacre of the Jews, World War II and you see the kind of a treatment he has done and obviously I also talked in detail about the anthropomorphic uh, characterization, right, where the soldiers or the countries are represented by different animals, but we are not supposed to understand that it is a, like a Mickey Mouse, right? I have always, sorry, I already talked about it. So you see that how beautifully and interestingly Spiegelman has talked in details about it. All right. So moving ahead, look at the slide, please. So here you see that what I tried to do in this lecture. I hope that uh, this lecture was able to give you an idea about what entailed in the first ever narrative that began the trend of the graphic novel, right? So I have been talking about it. One of the major aim of this lecture was introduce you to the story, right? To the story, to the plot and analysis of graphic novel, right, written by pioneer of the underground comics movement, I have already talked about it, right. Will Asner, I already discussed and, and today we in this lecture we talked about Art Spiegelman. So to, to open up your mind towards the myriad ways, various ways, n number of ways in which comics may be conceived apart from having the stereotypical humorous overtone all right so so understand this the point what i did it for you is this that how uh, these uh, uh, this story is and these like either it was bill asner's uh, uh, contact with a god art or spiegelman's mouse they both are challenging they both are questioning the way we have been thinking about comics or let us say about graphic med novels or let us say comic medium through which uh, art is presented, alright. So that was a, just a simple way to explain to you and to bring two examples to show you that why we should take it very seriously, right. Look at the story of the contract with a god and the artistic process through which it was created and look at the mouse art Spiegelman and the process through which it was created. So there you both see it is a uniqueness and the line that is blurs between the serious work of art and so called the comic medium through which art is produced as a low form of art. I am sure that for next lecture, I will pick up something very interesting for you, maybe the Superman, right, which you have been listening and talking about it. But yes, I will tell you in a different ways, which we have not assumed in a particular way. Right? So new way will be coming before you. So all right, have a good day. Enjoy reading comic and see you next time and please read the graphic novels. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.